our development area, and uh, this is where we uh, develop all of our new items. Uh, behind me, or next to me here, is uh, the Stormtrooper that we're starting to mock up as a full-size standing figure. Side, we're doing some other Star Wars characters, Shizor. We're also doing a, uh, a Boba Fett helmet at the present time, uh, which is in, the, in certain stages of development. I think uh, some of the best masks that were ever made were the uh, Universal Horror characters. They were very dramatic and accurate and uh, loved by the public. At the time, they were a $35 retail item, and, which was pretty expensive. And there were a lot of people who wished that they were able to purchase them and were able to. And uh, people come up to me today and say, Oh, if I, I mowed lawns and mowed lawns and mowed lawns, and, and then finally you discontinued you discontinue that line, and I wasn't able to get it. Uh, this is a uh, Lucasfilm character uh, called Gisor, um, and uh, he's a CD-ROM character, novel character, which apparently is an expanding market. The people are uh, uh, seeing these CD-ROM characters, having intimate interactions with them through this medium, and uh, this is just a, um, an expanding uh, of that market, and that people now can have various items that relate to it. In this case, they can be the character. You don't just see it, you don't just play with him, you can be him. Did all the special effects props for uh, Body Snatchers, the original Body Snatchers. That was a project that my dad did, uh, in one of the probably one of the first things that he did in the motion picture business. Uh, a tree from... From hell it came, uh, did a lot of uh, vacuum form pieces uh, for uh, the Great Race, did uh, the car bodies for the Great Race, vacuum form car bodies. I remember when I was about uh, 15 or 16 years old being around when that was done. Did a lot of interior props and, uh, and items for Irma LaDuce and What Did You Do in the War Daddy and a lot of movies that uh, uh, started to use uh, vacuum form plastic pieces. Yeah, that's uh, one of the uh, uh, Planet of the Apes masks, the original Don Crow's Planet of the Apes mask. Uh, Planet of the Apes was about 1971-72. Uh, As I translate people's drawings and uh, uh, figures into three dimensions, designers will design something either on paper with a drawing or uh, they'll uh, create something in miniature, maquette form, and then I'll translate it into uh, a three-dimensional piece that'll fit, allegedly, a, a human head. A staple line of Halloween merchandise, really. That's really what keeps the company going. So uh, we try to center in on the affordable price item and do as best a job as we can and, and get them out to the public as best we can. Uh, distributing them to uh, stores all throughout the United States and actually even through the whole world. We sell internationally. So underneath this we have a version of the perfect human head uh, bus that we use and over that we just build the clay to make the, uh, to make the character and it's always assured to fit because of the head that we have underneath here has been designed to be the perfect adult sized head. So it's mostly working with uh, two-dimensional images and putting them up in three dimensions. And um, it's, it is a lot of fun. It's a great job. It's a great job. And there's a lot of work in this, both for props and uh, movies. And in this case, it's uh, products, for Halloween products. I came from a small town and like a lot of people uh, from a uh, musical comedy background, uh, high school plays and such uh, fall into that realm. And it's not exactly sculpting, but it gets you into a crowd where you start trying to express yourself in uh, ways other than just uh, speaking with people day to day on the phone. And I used to make costumes and makeup for myself um, during uh, my teen years. I uh, was sculpting uh, these various masks for myself and theater and haunted houses, all these outlets. And uh, it's a type of hobby that you can actually make money at, especially in big cities like this. So that's why I'm here. And uh, I am gratified with my work. And uh, it, it is good to uh, pursue something in life that you can do to a point where you constantly get better. There's many facets where you can accomplish the workload, and once you've accomplished it, um, the feeling is that you're, you're good at it, 
you're as good as you ever need to be, and you won't have to get any better. Where artistic pursuits, um, you constantly feel like you're getting better, even if it's just that you start expressing yourself more honestly with what you're creating. Obviously, you can't express yourself personally with doing a commercial art piece like this, where I have to be rigidly adhering to what Lucasfilm wants, right down to uh, having them fly out and look at it. I'm just perfecting a technical skill. We had to do species. We're doing a full-size cell body. We're doing a full-size cell. And then we're also doing uh, uh, the head as a mask, as a uh, collect mask collector's piece. And then we have uh, the male cell, which is uh, barely seen in the movie, but it's a very fascinating character. This is one that's been molded already. It wasn't, it wasn't um, an approved sculpture, so it was, uh, it was molded, and then they were able to see it in three dimensions. We could ship it to them, and they could actually handle it. This one here is much more fragile. It's made out of water clay. Really great stuff to sculpt in. It's like sculpting in mud at first. So soft, you can really, you can really work it to your will very easily, unlike a lot of sculpting mediums. <laughs> and of course, when they're not here, you can do anything you want with the sculpture. And as it dries out, it gets nice and harder and harder to the point where you can get nice polished items out of this. This is how cars are start out. Automobile parts start out as what wet water clay. And uh, once it gets nice and stiff and hard, you can like polish it, you know, perfectly smooth. Or in the case of some of the other things you see, like the stormtrooper and things, starts out in clay, and then we make a plaster part off of that that you can sand and make it perfectly smooth. You know, from organic shapes to mechanical constructions, uh, Don Post has done a, a wide variety of things, and he keeps a lot of people around town hired. It's an interesting business here where uh, you kind of work in the same clique of people, but you don't work with them all at once. You bounce around from place to place, and you see the same faces time and time again. Um, and it's kind of neat. It's really kind of neat. Don Post Studios started, uh, you know, way back in 1938, and uh, it's really had been operated uh, by my father as a really as a way to express himself artistically and to make a living and he really wasn't out to conquer the world or anything he was just out to enjoy himself in his work and uh, uh, he made there were a lot of things that were made that were appreciated by the public and uh, I felt it was my opportunity to make sure that the public uh, was able to receive that merchandise and that it would be made and uh, consistently made so that they would be able to enjoy it. And uh, that's really my part of the Don Post story.